Hi, my name is Roseanne Bradford. I'm the rose from In Rose's Garden. And I am really thrilled to again be one of Jesse James Bead's rising stars. Um, what I didn't mention in my last video was that I started um, my, my uh, business in 2012 after having made jewelry for a while for my sisters which I have five of them, <laughs> because we always made something homemade for Christmas presents, and I always made jewelry. And it became a bit of an addiction. I don't, I probably make something at least, one thing at least every day. So um, I retired this last May 1st from the National Park Service. I worked at Glacier National Park as a seasonal starting in 1996 on the road crew became permanent in the warehouse, and uh, then transferred from Glacier to the Intermountain region as a uh, requisitional receiver for the whole of the Park Service Intermountain region um, in 2012. And so that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot, but I was tired. So it was time to retire. So um, today what we're going to work on is a really pretty heart in heart necklace. We're going to make a wire wrapped heart and use a tinch of heart in the center of it. Sort of like this one. But we'll probably make a few changes. Anyway, let's turn down and get started. Okay, to get started on this necklace, what we're going to need is some wire. I have 18 gauge, 16 gauge, and 24 gauge here. That is to make our wire wrapped heart. We'll also need the Tensha heart. Isn't that pretty? We're going to call this little necklace my black heart um, because it's black. I have a bale. Some beautiful chain. I believe this one is called just black and antique gold. It's very pretty little chain links. Oops, this one's got a little bend in it. We'll get that fixed. There we go. Easy peasy. And we'll need at least, well, I was going to say two feet. And two feet might be enough. But I've decided to add, instead of just one dangle, that little something different I talked about doing, we're going to do three little dangles on either side. So we'll need a little bit more than the original plan. Then I got some vibrant iris beads. It's a beautiful little set. And some blackberry baby beads. These are going to be for our dangles and add a little few other little beads around our heart. We'll also need some um, head pins. I like to use ones with a little bead on the end for a little bit of extra, and some jump rings. And I use oval jump rings for these. So the first thing we need to do is make our heart. So let's get with that. Okay, let's start making our heart, shall we? We'll need eight and a half inches of 16 or 18 gauge wire. I am using 16. And then we'll need three and a half inches of 18 or again 18 or 16 inch wire I'm using 18 for this and then you'll need two and a half to three feet of 24 gauge take your eight and a half inch wire and you want to make a small mark at the middle set at the middle point which would be four and a quarter so take a sharpie and do that and then you want to go from that mark and go and put a mark at one and an eighth because we want two and a quarter inch of the um, wire wrapping. So we go back one and an eighth to here. And then again the other way, one and an eighth to here. Okay, now... The first thing we want to do is take our 
little piece of wire here and get it pretty much in the center. I'm not putting marks on this one because my wire wraps may not hit the spot where the mark is at, but they will on here because the whole thing is going to be covered on the larger one. So let's take our 24 gauge. We'll go up to this spot right here where we have this mark and we'll do a couple of wire wrap. We'll do our first wire wraps to hold it in place. Now I always use my thumb to push it, thumbnail to push it down into place to make sure it's good and tight. Then we will put this wire in as close as we can to like, as I said, to the center. Okay, that looks good. Now this is a three, three pattern. So we put three across the one, then we take and put three across both. Tighten it up. Now when we have that three, we go and we're, now see that's what it's gonna it can move in for a little while so you'll want to be careful of that now we want to just go three on the upper wire again oops to go all the way around <laughs> okay now one between the two two and between the two again and three now tighten it down with your thumbnail, or if you don't have that, you could use your pliers probably. But okay, so that, like I said, this is a three-three pattern. We're going to go three across just one bar, and then three across both bars. So one, two, three across four, both. Tighten it with my thumbnail. Now we come back to the back. One. Between the two, two, and three. Again, tighten with your finger knit thumbnail, and then we'll go back to three across both. Two, three. Back to the back. You can see the pattern developing here. And then we have one, two, three, push it down, back together for both of them. One, it's trying to go over where I don't want it, two and three. And we're back at the back again and between the two. One, two, and three, and push. One, two, three. Back at the back, push these into place. So you can see how the pattern is developing. Let's see, is this the focus? There we go. Now we're back at the back again, so now we're going to go and divide the two wires and do three. Oops, I got a hair stuck in there. Don't want that. Okay, so one, two, three, one, two, three, back. One, two, three, both of them. One, two, three, and push. Ooh, I think I let this wire slip. Let's see if I still can get it down through any further. For a while, this will be mobile, and you can move it around. If if you uh, have, if it's too far, if you've got too far, it you won't be able to move it anymore. I think that we're 
Now we're good. Okay, so now we're back to just wanting the the um one. So one, two, three, and one, two, three on both. One, come on, tighten. Two, three, one, two, three. we at? Good. Okay. Okay, now we're going to the back again, and we're going to do just the the um, one side. One, two, three, tighten, both one two three back to the back again and over just the one if you need to you can pull this out of your way a little bit two and three one two three on both now one two three on the back one just the one you see how it's coming along one Two and three. Now we're going back to just the one on the one side again. One, two, and three. And now we'll do both. One, two, three. See how we are doing right there so far. Hmm. Not sure we're gonna make it to that line and still have wire left. Let's see if we can make it move a little bit bigger for us. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now we're at the bottom again. One, two, and three. Oops, let's see what it looks like. It needs tightened a little bit. There we go. One, two, and three. Back it up here. Ooh, come on, spread, baby. One, two, three. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Looks like we need to slip down here just a little bit. Okay. Looks like we can do one more set. One, two, three, 
and then we'll go to the back and do the one, two, three on this. One, two, and three. Looks like we're pretty good. This particular wire looks like it's a little bit... Oh, I see it crossed its buddy. There we go. Okay. Now, now that we have this, we can now clip off our extra wire. And we need to make sure that that's down. Okay, that feels good. This one's a little up. So we'll just tuck it a little bit. Okay. The next step is to take your bell making pliers and make the loop on either side of your 18 inch. I think this one's going to be a little too long, but that's all right. We'll check it. As you can see, it is a little long, so estimate about how much you how much you need to take off. Take your pliers and cut it out of the loop and then tighten it. Okay, and there we have this section. The wire wrap part is done. Okay, the next step is to turn this into a heart. So we'll need our round bell making. Um, wire mandrel and our triangular one. Now again we want to find the middle of this piece so as you can see it's at two and a quarter so we want one and an eighth so that's about it's a little over two and a quarter but so we want it looks like about this Another way to check besides just measuring is to count your loops. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it looks like this one right here is our middle where this one here is. So take that, put it against your mandrel. At eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. Almost went too far. Okay. And then push it up on either side till it forms the triangle. Now it's going to look wonky like this. See, it's bent. That's fine because you can push it back into place. See how I did that? Now, just to make sure that we don't have any problems, take out your block and your mallet with the, um, use a rubber mallet, or this one is a silicon, I believe. over there we go our triangular bottom is done
Okay, after you've done that, you can sort of finger straighten anything that still wants to go a little crooked on you. Then we take our round one, go up about an inch, and pull it around. But we don't want to go all the way around. We just want to go about halfway around. See? It looks like I'm a little high on that one. So we'll go back in. And pull it around some more. Okay. Okay, we do a little finger tightening there. Now we're going to take the smaller side and we're going to make loops on the ends. Now we just sort of play with it till it forms down good. If you don't feel like it's got a good circular pattern on it, just put it back on your form and pull it around a little bit. Okay. Now we've got this pretty good, but the match aren't matching so where is the mid which one is in the middle i think this one needs to just come down a little bit more maybe yeah that's too much it makes too much of a dip we don't want that much of a dip because our tension will go down too far if we do that so what we're going to do is just trim off the circles And retwist them. That on way. Now, just pull it across. And this side's still a little bigger than the other, so we'll take off just a touch more. Spin it again. Bring her onto the mandrel. Bend her. This one's got out of shape a little bit on this side, so let's bend it again. Okay. And then we get it together, and there we have our heart. Okay, now that we have our wire heart finished, let's pull out our tinches and our uh, eye pin and get some uh, little beads out and start working on it. Excuse me, that's a head pin. The eye pin does have a little loop, and this one has a little ball head. So I've got this. It's a three inch head pin with a ball on the end. I like this for the extra little bit of oomph that it adds to a lot of stuff. 
So we'll take that and then I've chosen one of the little tiny beads out of the Vibrant Iris, one of the Crystal Rondelles, and then I've got a little um, gold round spacer that I found to put in the top of the heart, and then I have this little blue bead from one of last year's Valentine's. So we're going to put that together. And then the last little blue one. And that's how it's going to look. As you can see, it will fit in here. Even with the wire wrap at the top, it should be all right. So now we'll do a, a um, wrapped loop at the top here. We want the loop to head the same direction as these. Though I don't suppose it really makes a lot of difference considering that the roll, these will roll around and so if it's not quite where I want it, we can always roll it. You can do the wrapping with your fingers or if you prefer pliers. I like pliers sometimes. I feel like I have a little more control. Cut the excess loose. Oops, I should have held that. It went flying. Lucky I'm by myself. And then tuck this in. Straighten her a little bit. As you can see, we still have some room, which is a good thing because we want to take a larger jump ring. I'm using ovals. We'll open this up. And attach the Tincha heart to the wire heart right here at these loops. Now this can be a little tricky because you're going through two loops and it wants to fall back out again. So just take your time. As I said, it wants to fall back out again. <laughs> Come on, baby, let me get hold of you. There we go. And then bring the jump ring together. Now this one's a little loose, so let's... Do the wiggle till we feel it connect together. And, and now the tincture is in the middle heart. And as you can see, it just gets almost to the bottom down there. Now with a round jump ring, this would be a little further, closer up, but, uh, um, or a smaller one of these. I'm not sure a smaller would work through both of the wire loops, though. Another way to hook it on is simply to open up one of these turns a little bit, but with a twist, and just slide the decoration right onto it. And if you do go over, you can add a little bit of more uh, decoration or something to sort of hide that fact by taking some of your chain and just putting it behind 
and letting the chain come down behind and that'll uh, give a little bit of extra dimension and then it looks just fine like I see. And I might try and change this to a small jump ring, see if it will work better, because I really would like it up a little closer. So let's see if that'll work. Okay, so now I've opened a small jump ring. Let's see how this will go. Well, it looks like it just might be fine going through both. Let's see. Let's put the heart on. Close these up and see if we have a... Good swing still rather than having a, it be too tight up there. Come on, baby, let's close. Yeah, I think that smaller one's going to be just fine. So now we have our Chincha heart made and inside our rather heart. And now to start the dangles. Okay, I've pulled out a bunch of odds and end beads. I think we're going to make three dangles on each side. And I love this little black enameled heart from out of the Blackberry Baby. And then um, I'm thinking this tassel and this little leaf and this little um, caged well it's not really caged it's got two bead caps on either side of it of this purple bead for the ends of our dangles i've uh pulled some of these out of blackberry baby most of these and then a lot of these are from the vibrant iris i really like the purple and then i brought out two uh purple they're not purple they're uh dark pink from um fruit dove and these little blue hearts which are from um the same last year's valentine's one that had that little blue space bead in there so now we have to decide how we want to put our dangles together i really love these beads aren't these pretty so i'm thinking Okay, here are the combinations I've decided on for the dangles. We have uh, this one's from Blackberry Baby. These are all, the rest are from Vibrant Iris, and then this little flower is from the Blackberry Baby group. <laughs> These are from Black um, the Vibrant Iris, as is this. This is from the Blackberry Baby. This is from Fruit Dove, as is the little sparkly one. And uh, we have. All of these, except for these little bead caps that I've added right here, and this bead, well, and the little blue heart, are from um, the Vibrant Iris. So, I tend to just get regular head pins, cut the tops off by just clipping the little head, taking my stepped bell making pliers wrapping that and then bending it over to make an eye pin this is actually better if you use your there we go so now that i have one of the eye pins made we'll put together one of the dangles
There are two more of these pretty purple ones, so I may make some earrings to match this with the purple. I think that would be really pretty. Now we just need to do the loop at the top on that one. And we'll have one of our dangles made. around, flip it over, bring in the pliers, wrap the pin. And then tuck. There we have one. Now we have six more to do. I have to tell you, I really love bell making pliers. Before I had these and I had to do them all by, with my round nose, it could, it was a bit of a pain in the rear. They weren't always the same size, and this way I know they always are. Now on this one, I'm going to use both this little purple flowery tassel and this really cool little leaf for the dangle. But I think, I think I want the leaf in the front. We'll close her up. Oop. Well, that didn't work. Connect the pin a bit more. That's better. Okay. Now we want to add the beads which we've decided on this little one. A little daisy spacer. I did add some of the spacers from out of my stash, but nearly everything on these are Jesse James beads. Number two. Sorry, a little fuzzy off my mat which could actually be cat fur, because one of my cats loves to sleep on my mat. Tuck. Oop, 
it's not quite tucked all the way. You want to make sure they are because you don't want it to get snagged on something. Okay. Number two. And then for number three. Head. Get the bell making pliers, roll it over, Where are you, baby? There it is. Okay. I like to put a bead cap on either side of my pearls because they tend to, um, the, the paint sometimes that they dye these with sometimes gets stuck up here. And when it comes down and off, it makes a, it leaves a white spot. So a bead cap covers that up nicely. Where's your little holdy? There it is. those nice and pretty and sparkly Okay, those are the three dangles that we're going to use for the side. And I'm going to make the other three off camera and be right back. Okay, now that we have all the dangles made, we need to decide how long we want them because we don't really want all four, I mean all three, excuse me, to dangle at the same length. That makes them look too packed up together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, and cut some chain and one will be right at the top up here. One will be a little lower and then one will be a little lower yet. So we're going to take the end of the chain. And yes, the way this is made, we're going to have to cut them loose. And that's all right. I'm Don't worry. I'm going to keep those little beads. So we'll cut... One loops here, and we'll cut this one apart off and put it to the side. And we'll cut two pieces loose. We'll do that again for the other side. We can take these little beads out here and 
use them for a different project. Come on, baby. Get rid of all these little flakes. Then we have to decide which one we want to be up closer and how much we want to dangle the other ones down. So we have... One, two, like three. So we get some small jump rings. And we'll start putting these together. You could just put just a length of chain on here also if you wish to. Just the two lengths. Now we'll put it on the side, see how we like it. If we decide it's too much, we can always take one off, or even two of them, and just make it one. I put some daisy spacers over beside me here thinking I was going to use them and then I didn't really need too many of them. Now let's make sure we got these on properly since some of these have definite directions that they need to go. Looks like I have this one sort of backwards, which is why you always need to check. So we'll move its jump ring so that it's facing the other direction. Behave yourself. Well, let's see how we're doing here. Now we need to put the other side together. 
Okay, so now we need to put the other side on. So let's start with this one since it's the inner one and has no pieces on it. So we'll get the little jump rings. These are small ones again. We'll open this up. Put this on. Put it on the bar. And tighten her up. Okay, there's the first one. Now to do the others, we need to put them together as well. So let's see. The one with the leaf and the tassel has the two um, little beads. So put this together. They don't go entirely together all at, all at once. Take both pair of pliers with a light pressure inward, move them back and forth a little bit, and then they will come together a lot better. Okay, so now let's put this one on the bar. And remember that we want the leaf to the front. Oop, come on, you didn't open. Naughty thing. There we go. So when we put it on the bar, we need to watch to make sure the leaf is going to be on the front. So it will be if we go this direction. So we'll put it right there and tighten her up. Oh, definitely not together this time. So we want to ease it together. Or if it's too bad, you might want to just get a new jump ring because you don't want to have it not go together. Oh, it's together. And the leaf is looking like it's towards the, the way I want it. So that's good. Now, lastly, is this pretty one with the black daisy on it. So get the little chain on it. And put it onto the bar as well. Remember, you want to watch for that daisy. So, oh, looks like it might be twisted a little bit. So, let's just bring this around a touch. Now, if it's not quite the way you want it to be, I lost my, there it is. Um, just take hold of top and bottom of your piece that's here and here and just give it a little twist. You probably need pliers to do it. Okay. Now that I have that, we'll put that on. And... and our pendant is finished now if you uh decided that you thought that oh, come on you guys stop twisting up they done right. There we go. Um, if you think that the top needs a little more oomph, you could wire wrap some small beads around the curve of the heart. I'm not going to, but you could do that. And so next we have to put on the bell. Okay, since we have this op open oval jump ring from when I took it off the tincture, we'll use it to put the bail on.
again, this will go through both sections of the heart. And then we'll just put the bail onto it and tighten it up. Now to put the chain on, and we have to decide also how long we want this to be. Oops, where's the end? Okay. This pretty little chain will fit right through the bale. I tested, tested it earlier. So, oh, this is a piece that needs cut off here on this end. through the bell. And then we have to decide our length. Now you've got two ways to do this. If you have a dressmaker mannequin like I do, you can just put it on her and tack it down and decide what length you like the best or you can just hold it up to yourself or if you've already decided on a length then of course you just need to uh, cut what length and measure and cut what length you want but we're gonna put her on Bonnie and see how how long we like it okay I've taken and hung the necklace on my mannequin as you can see I want the dangles to come down let the heart to stay up here and then so I've taken the chain and pinned it up where I want it and now I know where to cut so I'm actually thinking maybe we want the heart down a little lower so that it doesn't hang up some so let's check that Okay, I decided to lift it up some rather than lower it, so now I have where I want to cut the chain at. So now I just need to cut the chain and put on the clasp. Remember, when you're measuring, give yourself a little bit of room in your measurement when you're hooking her up onto a bus like this to be sure that you give room for the clasp, because if you don't, then it's just going to fall back down lower again. So anyway, next we'll put on the clasp. Okay, I've clipped the chain where we decided we wanted it. It ended up being about 20 inches. Now we're going to put on the clasp. And I haven't decided yet whether I want to use this clasp. I really like these type because they have the little bow in it and it holds better when you put them in because the uh, bow is holding across both wires. Or if I want to use this decorative one which is very pretty so and the clasp the bar is pretty long so maybe we'll we'll use this one so let's put this one aside and get out our oval jump rings to put this on okay now we just want to open the jump rings again I'm using oval it's a preference um, whether you like round or oval I simply prefer oval because they are, in my opinion, a little more secure since the break is on the lo on the long side and your wires and things aren't likely to drop into that spot and work themselves loose. There's that side. Tighten her up. And she's done. Let's see how this goes in. That works fine. Oh yeah, the bar's gonna be just fine. So there we are. I hope you like that. 
and I'll get some pictures for us. Thanks. Okay, now that we've finished the necklace, you can see how it is. Unfortunately, my bust is black, so I don't know if it shows up entirely. Uh, yep, necklace, and then a pair of earrings I made off camera uh, to match, which matches this dangle right here, as you can see. Oops, knocked it backwards. Anyway, there's our pretty little necklace. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, as I say, you don't have to put all three dangles on. Can be one, can be two, can be one with some chain. You could put some chain behind the heart. You could do a little wire wrapping around the, the edges of the heart to make a few little changes. But uh, yeah, there she is. And I hope you really enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye-bye.